Hello, Matrix. You will see how so much of what you've learned will stand you in good stead in this topic. Points of intersection. A really enjoyable one. We have finally reached our last section on analytical geometry. The first two examples below, both from a previous video, lay an important foundation, so revisit them. And then something new in work to example three. Pause to do these. We find the points of intersection of the line y equals x plus five and the circle x squared plus y squared equal to 25 quite easily, graphically. And now, algebraically, we solve these equations. The coordinates of the points of intersection must satisfy both equations. And we arrive at these points here, confirming what we found graphically. This example provides the full view of the concept, both the graphical and the algebraic. Here we focus on axis intercepts. Pause to check. To find the y-intercepts, we put x equal to zero in both equations, and we find that the graphs share a y-intercept of zero minus two. To find the x-intercepts, we put y equal to zero into both equations, and we find that they share an x-intercept for zero. In the sketch, we note that the axis-intercepts are actually just again the points of intersection. Pause to check worked example three. To determine whether the points A, B and C lie inside, on or outside the circle, we find the distance between the point and the center M and compare it to the radius. The center M is the point minus one, one from the standard form here and the radius is equal to five units from the r squared value there of 25. The distance from A to M, from A to M, is equal to five units, which is equal to the radius of the circle, and therefore A lies on the circumference of the circle. The distance from B to M is equal to the square root of 32, which is more than the radius, and therefore B lies outside the circle. The distance from C to M is equal to the square root of 20, which is less than the radius, and therefore the point C lies inside the circle. An elementary concept, not so. Now pause to observe the possibilities when considering the points of intersection of a line and a circle. A line and a circle either cut, as is this case, with two points in common, and we say the line is a secant. Or the line touches, and there is one point in common, and the line is a tangent. Or they don't cut or touch, and there are no points in common. This is the graphical view. And now, algebraically, if we substitute y equals mx plus c into the equation of the circle, we could find two solutions. Or, one solution, or no solutions. When you get to calculus, you will meet this concept again. A link to calculus? It is important to integrate different topics in mathematics. We have seen a line and a circle having two points of intersection, or one point of intersection, or no points of intersection and this line cutting the circle, this line touching the circle, and this line neither cutting nor touching the circle. So too in calculus, we have something similar between a line and a parabola, two points of intersection or one point of intersection or no points of intersection. In this case, the line cuts the parabola. In this case, the line touches the parabola, in which case the line is a tangent or the line does not touch or cut. Also, finding the equation of a tangent to a circle 
and in calculus to a parabola will be very similar in process. Pause to do these two worked examples. Pause to check your solutions to A. See the clear graphical illustration of the three options. Line y equals 4 cuts the circle in two points and we say it is a secant. Line y equals 5 touches the circle here and this is then a tangent. Line y equals 6 does not cut or touch the circle. Note our point of contact, 0, 5 of the tangent and our points of intersection of the secant. We calculate these coordinates by inspection using the 3, 4, 5 triangle of Pythagoras in both instances, finding x equal to 3 and x equal to minus 3. And now B, algebraically. Pause to check. Finding the points of intersection algebraically, we solve the equation of the circle and the equation of the line. And in this case, we get two answers, therefore two points of intersection, and we confirm that the points of intersection are indeed minus 3, 4 and 3, 4. When we solve this equation with y equals 5, we get only one answer, and one root means only one point of intersection, and y equals 5 touches the circle. The point of contact is confirmed to be 0, 5. When we solve this equation with y equal to 6, we find x squared equaling a negative number, which is just not possible. Therefore, no points of intersection. Pause to check your answers to worked example 5. Is the line a tangent to the circle? At the possible points of intersection, the equations will be true simultaneously, so we solve the equations, and we find x equal to minus 4. There is only one root, and yes, therefore, the line is a tangent to the circle. To find the point of contact, we substitute x equal to minus 4, and find the point minus 4, minus 1. Pause to study this slide, where we consider an interesting fact. Two circles touching each other, we say externally. We note that the distance between their centers, AB, is equal to the sum of their radii. And we write down like that. And if the circles do not cut or touch, the distance between their centers is greater than the sum of their radii. If the circles cut twice, as in this case, the distance between their centers is less than the sum of their radii. We have one point in common here, we have two points in common here, and we have no points in common in this case. Simple, but fun. Pause to do the last worked example. Pause to check your answers. Circle center P, we convert from the general form to the standard form so that we can write down the center, 8, 4, and the radius equal to the square root of 45. Circle center, the origin, has a radius of the square root of 5 units. And now part B. Pause to check this. To prove that the two circles touch each other externally, we apply a converse statement and prove that the distance between the centers equals the sum of their radii. And part A was a great step up towards determining the length of PO the distance between the centers, P and O, which we find to be 4 root 5 units. And the sum of the radii is equal to 4 root 5 units also, 
and therefore the circles touch each other externally. You could conclude right now, or entertain yourself considering the scenario of two circles touching internally. Pause to investigate. This time, the distance between their centers is equal to the large radius subtract the small radius, AB equal to the difference in the radii. If the circles do not touch, then the distance between their centers is less than the difference of the radii. If they cut twice, then the distance between the centers is greater than the difference of their radii. One point in common, two points in common, and no points in common. Thank you for listening. I trust that you have enjoyed the ride through analytical geometry and points of intersection in particular. Be inspired as you move on to the two exam prep videos to learn some more. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.